We recently tested to see if you could refill the Enermax Liktec TR4 240mm cooler, this one, to just see if it's actually maintainable and serviceable further in its life. Because this is a high-end cooler that you're putting on a high-end processor, so you might be using a workstation like that for four or five years onward. At that point is when you would start encountering permeation issues. It tends to be about five years that the liquid begins permeating the tubes enough that you can lose some performance, you get air bubbles in the tank, or you can suck air through the pump, and all of those things create noise, create friction, and things like that. So we refilled it. Now we're testing to see how the refill worked thermally. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. For the first thing here, there was no increase in noise. So fortunately, we were able to get all the liquid back into the loop, and that meant that the uh, pump noises that you hear kind of up until the point that it's fully refilled went away. So it's actually the same noise levels as before, exactly, and that leaves us with just thermal performance. We're gonna start with those and get that out of the way right now, and then come back and look at what could you do if you were refilling your own loop of a similar build to this one to improve on what we did, because that was a learning process. So now that we've gone through it, there's some clear things that we could then all benefit from looking at in terms of filling the loop and making sure that it is maintained for a long service life. In our Prime 95 test at 100% fan speeds, 4 gigahertz, and 1.35 volts, the Enermax Liktec 240CLC kept our 1950X at 49.6 degrees over ambient, and that's for T-Dye. That's about one degree lower than the stock unit with the original coolant. This is very nearly within usual test variants, and we can declare these as functionally equivalent in performance. There is no appreciable difference and may even be a slight performance uplift, if that. The peak temperatures are similarly distanced, about one degree, and the idle temperatures are about the same. Refilling the coolant did not hurt performance and may have slightly aided, though it's not an appreciable uplift if so. Blender is next. This one is slightly less stressful, but does do AVX workloads, and it's more reliable in its load level on CPUs and power consumption. For this one, we're seeing a more confidently measurable difference of about 2 degrees Celsius between the original 240 and the refilled 240, and we're at 42.3 degrees for the stock test and 40 for the refilled test, giving us 2 degrees even with highs similarly distanced. And there's some room, of course, here for just variance between tests. We did remount this uh, three times for each test, so that gives us an average, average all those passes, and that helps account for things like thermal paste spread differences, though we use a graduated syringe and place a, a known amount of compound on and then spread it manually. So it's pretty consistent, but still doing it multiple times helps make sure that any potential differences in how the compound was spread can be accounted for and averaged out. That said, we're really not that far from test variation, uh, from margin of error, things like that, from sensor, reading differences. So functionally the same, which is really not bad because we weren't going for better here. We were going for not worse. <laughs> so uh, we achieved not worse. And technically in Blender, we saw two degrees improvement, which is outside of error a bit. Uh, so it looks like maybe a slight performance uplift. Things to know here, the coolant we filled this with uh, was more parts distilled water than what was probably in there originally. We originally had just stock with the unit, a propylene glycol mixture. That's what pretty much all of these closed loop coolers come with. We don't know the exact mixture of glycol versus distilled water, but it can go up to 40%. It just kind of depends on what the manufacturer is going for. If they're trying to store a negative 40C, they're gonna have a higher mixture or higher percentage of glycol. So it depends on what they spec, but we were definitely under whatever was in there uh, and then we did have a light amount of a uh, biocide in there to help with potential corrosion, but uh, I wouldn't recommend necessarily using the coolant that we used, which is just from an EK kit with an additive in the fluid. Uh, you could probably do something a bit better than what we did, but we're not, uh, we're not worried about things like uh, corrosion right now because it's just a test of can you refill it, not how should you refill it. So it wasn't a tutorial. 
But yeah, select your coolant carefully if you do a refill and make sure it's got some kind of biocide in it or something to help with potential corrosion concerns because what comes in their stock has those chemicals in there. So you'll want to make sure you do as well because they do mix metals uh, with the screw the and the cold plate and things like that. Uh, next thing here. So what could we improve on is probably the next main part. So uh, starting, you know, we refilled this with just a uh, just a measuring cup, basically, and started with about 220 milliliters. The cooler itself, I believe, has 200 milliliters in it, almost exactly. So that's about what you'd want to put in. In terms of making sure more, uh, in, making sure the coolant gets in there faster, which is what we really could have used when doing this ourselves, it probably get a brake bleed kit. So I realized that after we did the whole refill that for my bike repair, I've got a bleed kit and that's a, a really fat syringe that with for bikes you would fill with the hydraulic fluid. And then at the end of it, there's a rubber tube and that goes into the brakes. Uh, the tube for the kit I have is a bit too small for what we were doing, but if you got one of those and got a rubber stopper or something, or just even uh, a rubber stopper and then kind of taped it on the, uh, what we'll call the fill port on the Enermax unit, you'd be able to fill it a bit faster. And then you could uh, just kind of hold it up in the air, inject and let it go down the tubes. So that would be faster. Now we got the job done and it worked fine at the end of the day. There's no pump noise. Uh, it's technically cooler than it was. So it worked. You could do it faster with, uh, with something like that though for the setup. Another thing we considered but didn't do was filling through the cold plate instead of the uh, the side screw holes. So the reason we didn't do that is because the concern of once you fill the whole thing up, how much fluid more do we need to fill that bottom chamber where we're going to be obviously closing it off with the cold plate. And then the other concern is with one set of hands, making sure you can actually get the cold plate back on without spilling any coolant while holding everything. But uh, I think it probably would be easier to fill through the cold plate next time because then you can more easily get all the coolant down the tubes into the radiator and then close it once it's pretty close to full, you know, pull the screw off the side and then fill the rest through that port. That would probably be a bit easier as well. So those would be the suggestions for improving if you wanted to do this yourself. It was, again, not a tutorial. It was a learning process of looking at how easy is it to actually refill this thing if you wanted. Turns out it's actually not bad. Even going about it the way we did, which is a brute force method, not terrible. And considering other units on the market are more or less non-refillable almost entirely, the Enermax one definitely is more serviceable for a long uptime. So that's it for this one. It worked pretty well, all things considered, and you can do it if you wanted to. If things start getting uh, heavily permeated down the line, which you can basically tell by listening for gurgling noises or uh, listening for the pump making any kind of grinding noise, that means there's probably not as much liquid anymore or it's pulling air through the loop. So uh, you can subscribe for more as always, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one if you'd rather support us through means that aren't Patreon right now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.